In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to the Loop Deck so that you can understand how it can help you be more productive on your Mac or indeed PC, although I will be looking more at the Mac side of things. Now, if you are just interested in the Loop Deck, then consider this, a, as I say, an overview of the product. If you already have a Loop Deck, then this is actually the first in a series of videos, a beginner's guide to Loop Deck that's going to take you all the way through from, you know, taking it out of the box to actually having it up and running and uh, having it set up for uh, your whole productivity needs and understanding how best to go about doing that. So I'll leave a link to all of the other videos in the series in the description. Uh, but first of all, what is it we're actually talking about? Well, here it is. This is the Loop Deck. It is uh, essentially an input device for your computer. So it's got a series of buttons, uh, a few dials on the side here as well. Uh, these are sort of uh, fixed buttons on the device itself that you press <laughs> just like that. Uh, they are numbered uh, with an icon here and then numbers one to seven. This is the uh, home button. I'll come to that in due course and explain how to use all of these different things. Uh, then we've got the dials that I mentioned previously. Uh, there is three on either side. They, they do stick out from the device itself. Uh, they are sort of ratcheted. So you do have a slight sort of click to them uh, and they move in a sort of incremental fashion. Um, and then also you can push those in and out as well. So uh, pushing that in will activate something. Then we've got these 12 keys in the middle. Now this is actually one large touch screen. So uh, we've got a large touch screen here uh, and you'll notice that it's uh, essentially 12 buttons in the middle but we've got these strips down either side. Now I'll come to that in a moment um, but one thing to uh, point out is that although it is a flat touch screen and there is no sort of movement on it in terms of when you push the key in there it doesn't actually you know clunk or anything like that. It's not a physical button um, but it is a touch screen. There is some haptic feedback. I'll come to that uh, in due course as well um, but the whole screen does have these sort of dividers so there is this kind of like plastic laid over the top of it uh, that does uh, sort of separate out these buttons so you do get some sort of tactile feel as to exactly where you are pressing on the uh, device itself. Now all of these buttons are essentially programmable and uh, when I say programmable you're not going to get into any coding or anything like that. There is a user interface where you're basically just going to uh, apply all of the different actions and things like that that you want and obviously I'll be covering all of that in a little moment as well. Um, but you're not actually limited to just the number of uh, keys that you've got here because there are ways that you can basically create little groups of keys for different actions uh, for different applications rather I should say that you're going to use this for uh, and also for each of those sort of groupings if you like um, you can also add multiple pages of uh, actions as well so here we've got 12 on this screen but with a little swipe across the screen uh, it's swiped over to another whole page of actions so with this thing sitting on your desk um, you can really uh, sort of have a lot of buttons just at the uh, touch of a uh, fingertip or maybe a quick swipe over to another page and a touch over there so um, you can do pretty much anything well you can do anything that you could do with a keyboard shortcut on a, uh, on, a, on, a on a Mac or a PC uh, because you could just simply assign that particular keyboard shortcut to the device but there are also some other more complex things you can do by creating macros where you're basically adding you know multiple different actions together and we'll be covering exactly how to do all of that in the uh, this series of uh, videos. Now just in terms of the size of it I'll show you relative to a, uh, a regular keyboard uh, there you can see uh, how large it is if I have it fitting into the screen uh, it's uh, just not quite as deep if you like as a regular keyboard with a, uh, uh, the function keys at the top uh, I'll just pop this little thing off at the back. Uh, that shows you it's basically like the height of the number keys plus the letter keys. Uh, and in terms of the width, well, it's probably about half the width of a regular keyboard, maybe a little bit more than half of the width. Uh, and in terms of the depth, it's pretty slim, actually. Uh, not, too, uh, not too fat there. Uh, obviously, the dials do uh, stick out. It's connected over uh, USB. Uh, there's a USB-C connector on the back. USB-C on the other end of the cable, but it comes with an adapter to plug into a regular USB 3 as well. Um, the device can sit just flat on the uh, on the desk or wherever you want to put it. Uh, it does also come with this uh, little kickstand as well. Not kickstand, it is a uh, either it's fitted or it's not uh, and it just clips in at the back just like that. Normally I'm not a fan of these kind of uh, uh, little sort of 
flimsy plastic additions, but actually uh, its simplicity makes it feel quite rigid somehow. Uh, so I was a bit surprised at, uh, at that. And actually it means that uh, it's really easy to just pop on and off. Uh, you just pop it off like that uh, and then pop it back on. So in terms of uh, actually taking it, if you are traveling or anything like that, it's really easy to just literally, you know, do that and pop it into your bag. And it does feel like, uh, I mean, I haven't really uh, thrown it around as such, uh, but I've certainly carried it in a bag or two uh, and it does just easily sort of pop in and uh, you don't, sort of really worry about taking it on the road the overall uh, quality of it it's a sort of uh it's a plastic finish the uh, the dials feel like metal um but it uh, still feels pretty solid and as i say all of the actual moving parts the dials the buttons things like that feel pretty solid now if you are interested in a loop deck uh, i'm going to make a uh, a little guess here i'm going to guess that you've heard about the stream deck as well so uh, i will be doing a full head-to-head -head comparison of the two devices uh, but i should just sort of compare it to the stream deck since we are uh, talking about them uh, and as i say i'm guessing that you've if you've heard of this one you've heard of the stream deck too uh, the stream deck's been out for a little while longer um, and this is the stream deck xl which is the 32 key uh, version uh, and that there is one of the uh, differences the stream deck is literally there are three sizes and they are differentiated by the number of keys they've got so there's either the 32 key there is a 15 key or there is a six key version there are different versions of the loop deck and i'll come on to those in a moment um, but uh, the thing about the loop deck is it does have have these extra features of these uh, these dials here uh, and obviously it is a touch screen but that doesn't affect the uh, the actual functionality you can still change the icons on the stream deck just as you can in the loop deck but where it comes to size uh, the uh, stream deck just feels like a much bigger um, lump of a, <laughs> of a thing really um, the uh, I'm not really showing it too well here let me turn it on its side because that's where the sort of bulk of the stream deck really uh, shows itself so uh, there you can see the thickness of the stream deck compared to the loop deck the loop deck does just look tiny not very good a sort of black device on a uh, black dark colored desk here really is it but you can see there I mean even without that stand on the back which is removable on the stream deck it's still a pretty fat uh, device there to have sitting on the uh, the desk uh, and certainly it's not quite the uh, same of you know feeling of oh I'll just throw it into my backpack or uh, messenger bag or whatever it is carrying it with your uh, laptop whereas this certainly feels like it's got that portability factor with it I mean that said with lockdown and <laughs> whatever has been going on over the past two years generally I haven't really moved far from my desk but nevertheless it is just interesting to note that uh, sort of difference in size and in weight as well this is definitely a much lighter device but without feeling uh, you know it still feels solid so I don't want to give the impression that it feels light and cheap it feels that uh, still feels solid uh, and just nicely light <laughs> and yet when it's on the desk with the uh, little kickstand it doesn't really uh, slide around too much and you certainly don't have any issue sort of pressing it feeling it's too uh, light under the fingers or anything like that uh, so as I say that is just to give a comparison of the uh, the size it's not quite as wide uh, not quite as uh, deep and certainly uh, a fraction of the uh, the thickness of it so uh, this is as I say the loop deck live let's have a little look though at the other devices in the loop deck range and in fact where the loop deck started was a rather different looking device and this one is still available this is the loop deck plus and this is coming from its really its heritage as a device to be used as a companion for uh, photo editing so um, you'll see on here we've got uh, some different things related to uh, photo editing by the way all of these keys on here are basically sort of fixed use you can uh, change the uh, I should say I should rephrase that <laughs> you can change the uh, the things that these are controlling um, but there's no icons on here to change or anything like that they've just literally got uh, dials here for contrast uh, exposure clarity so you can see the heritage of you know what this is intended for here because of all of these devices uh, because of all these labels I should say on the device you've got these little sliders here these little wheels to control various different things uh, these are programmable um, but uh, yeah it's really coming from this as I say heritage of being used for uh, photo and video editing the stream deck on the other hand is coming from a sort of live streaming heritage so being able to control lots of different things on your live stream originally um, and so uh, both now have sort of uh, become i would say more general productivity tools and so the loop deck last year end of last year released this uh, new model which is the loop deck live this is the one that i was just uh, showing you that i've got that we're talking through today um but then we've also got the loop deck ct and this is uh basically still retaining some of that uh, photo editing video editing heritage because we've got this large wheel down at the bottom 
And you'll see as we start to look at the device and programming the device, there is this real sort of slant towards the creativity apps editing apps and those sorts of things. So this is the uh, Loop Deck Live, as I say, and if you take a look at all of uh, the things that we've got on this device, you'll notice that the Loop Deck CT basically just looks like a Loop Deck Live over on the, uh, the top here, uh, exactly the same functions we've just looked at. But then down at the bottom, we've got this extra large wheel. I can imagine that for, you know, skipping through the timeline of a video or something like that or editing adjusting levels whatever it happens to be and then you've got some additional buttons here that are programmable too but uh, again just uh, fixed uh, fixed text on those buttons rather than them having uh, icons that you can uh, you can change so uh, that is the uh, the two devices so what we're going to be looking at in this series of videos is how to program this and really it is how to program these two devices so these two rather than the uh, the loop deck plus which is a different kind of device really um, and one thing I should also say is if I come just down to this shot just one second <laughs> there we go losing my buttons for a minute um, is that um, whilst we have a uh, different uh, sets of actions on here so I can just sort of swipe through and see various different buttons on here um, we also have these dials on the side uh, and I mentioned that there are these little touch screens down on the side here as well well as well as having different sort of pages of icons that we can have on the uh, the device itself uh, we can also have different they still call them pages of actions for these um, dials as well so if I swipe on here uh, then it brings up a completely different set of uh, actions for the dial uh, and you can see here that next to the each of these dials uh, is the uh, little icon that's showing you what those things are for so in this case this is volume media track control and uh, web scroll and then if I do like that then uh, this has now changed the function of these so as well as having you know multiple pages of buttons we can also have multiple pages of the uh, dial actions as well so uh, that is the, the sort of the overview of the device and uh, why might you use this uh, I should say rather than uh, just using you know keyboard shortcuts and things like that on the computer well sometimes if you've uh, if you're using keyboard shortcuts and if you're familiar with them I still use keyboard shortcuts uh, extensively uh, and if I have got my uh, my hands on the keyboard and I am typing then it's very easy to just you know do all manner of keyboard shortcuts but if you're doing something like editing or something like that where you've got one hand on the mouse suddenly you are then really quite restricted on the keyboard shortcuts that are easy to do on your computer uh, and so I often find that uh, having my hand sort of on this device or my stream deck or I've got another one for 3d modeling when I'm doing uh, architectural work uh, which is another <laughs> another device for my uh, left hand to sit on whilst I am also using the mouse with the other hand so uh, there is a real sort of benefit to having a dedicated device where you can add all of your different shortcuts and actions and things like that so that is a little summary of the device itself um, let's have a little look though now at the actual application and uh, how we are going to um, actually program this I should say if you have um, already had had a loop deck for a while maybe you've just uh, not really had time to get into it or get it set up or anything like that um, then do definitely go and check for the latest software update I mentioned this because there was a new update at the time of filming just yesterday um, so we are on version 5.1 now and there was a couple of large uh, updates that came to the uh, to the, the way the application works so definitely go and uh, check out that I'll leave a link in the description but it is loopdeck.com slash get hyphen started that is always going to be the place where you can go to get the latest software so definitely make sure you have got the latest version of the software uh, on your computer so coming over to the uh, software itself though um, this is what it looks like when you open it up on your computer this is where we are going to control the device or rather I should say program the device uh, with all the actions that we want it to have um, now if uh, you've seen Stream Deck then uh, this will look somewhat similar uh, because it's got a similar sort of effect here where we've got a basically a graphical representation of the device itself so this is the Loop Deck Live uh, if you did have the Loop Deck CT uh, you would also see the picture of that device as well but we're going to stick with the uh, the loop deck uh, live and basically it's showing you all of the different uh, buttons that you've got on here all the different images that we can have on the screen all the different actions uh, and so on uh, so this is basically as I say just the area where we're going to be showing what we are putting on the device uh, how do we get stuff on the device well that's done through this section over here on the right hand side this is where we're going to find all of the different actions and things like that that we could possibly want to do and also how we can uh, program our own as well in terms of the actual programming it is just a case of 
uh, drag and drop. So if I come over to a blank space, uh, there are different actions down here. I'll be going through this in detail and talking all about this, but basically it's just a case of dragging and dropping just like that. So that's uh, the area where we're going to find the actions that we want. Uh, and then when we uh, want to activate that, we've now then got that on our device. And just to show you that whatever we're doing on here is actually being replicated on the device itself. So there is that button that I've just added into the desktop app is now uh, already there on the device and ready to use. Um, I should just say, I probably should have just mentioned this a little bit sooner, <laughs> when you do install the application uh, on the Mac, there is one little thing that it'll ask you to do, which is go into your security and privacy settings. Uh, it will prompt you to do this and talk you through uh, exactly where you need to go, um, but it is going to ask you to give access to certain areas of the uh, the Mac's operating system. Uh, and that's because you're going to basically use this as an input device to control various different things on your Mac. So it will ask you to give access to things like the acce accessibility section. Uh, it's going to ask for full disk access because there are things on here where you can access certain files and folders and so on. So it will need those uh, those access to those areas too uh, and it will also ask for certain automation access as well so if you're familiar with the uh, the mac then you'll know what this area is security and privacy in your system preferences this is where we're just basically granting it the permissions that it needs in order to do the job that we're going to be asking it to do uh, so just so that you know uh, to expect that and if you uh, notice that when you come through to the uh, the installation part uh, that it is nothing out of the ordinary and to uh, just go ahead and grant it those permissions um, there's a couple of other things that you might want to have a look at uh, because uh, this is as I say the area where we're going to program it I'm going to cover this in detail a little bit later um, this area up at the top is also where we're going to choose our profiles and workspaces don't worry about the uh, terminology there I'll cover off all of that is what all of that is but basically these are different use cases that we're going to have for the device so you can decide whether you know you want it to basically change what is on the screen based on the application that you're using or whether you want to build out something yourself from scratch where it's just going to be exactly what you want to have on it at any given time uh, I'll talk about the differences there um, so that's what these things are up here we'll be talking about that a little bit later um, we've also here this was the big addition to the new version of the software uh, we've got the loop deck uh, loop deck marketplace <laughs> and if you click on this it'll actually open up a completely separate window uh, which is where we can get access to uh, different profiles those are as I say these uh, ways of basically having specific use cases based on the application that you're using uh, there's also plugins which are ways to actually have groups of actions that are for specific use cases or specific applications as well and then we've got icon packs because one of the great things about the loop deck as with the stream deck you can actually change the icons that you have on the screen so that uh, you know rather than just having any text on there you will actually have a little graphic representation so you'll know what the button does and so in the new loop deck marketplace uh, you can actually download entire icon packs to help with uh, making your loop deck look pretty so uh, as I say that was one of the latest additions to the software that you can find up here um, then there is a couple of settings though that I want to draw your attention to so in the uh, little icon up here you will be prompted by the way if you want to to go and create a loop deck uh, account uh, and so in here you will have access to go and uh, sign in sign out and change some account settings and things like that useful to have this because it will then send you updates or send you notifications of updates and news and things like that so I have uh, created an account there um, but we have also then got this device settings uh, option here. So clicking in the device settings, you may want to, if you've had a loop deck for a while and haven't used it or you haven't used it in a while or haven't checked in a while, then just come down to the device configuration uh, in the device settings uh, and just come to the firmware update section just to check that you have got the uh, latest version. It will tell you if it's up to date or not. So you may want to just update the firmware, uh, the firmware being the sort of controlling uh, coding if you like on the device itself as opposed to the software which is on the on your computer so just check that that is on or I should say check that that is up to date <laughs> um, one that will be on by default is this vibration now this is where I mentioned earlier about there being some form of sort of haptic feedback uh, and basically this is that uh, when you press on the touch screen it's going to have this little sort of vibration a bit like you have a vibration alert on a mobile phone to sort of let you know if somebody's ringing uh, as an option to have that on or off uh, you also have that option on here as well 
Personally, I don't really like this uh, function. The uh, I find that it's uh, quite intrusive in terms of a from a noise point of view, given that I am using this primarily for recording and things like that. So it can be quite loud, especially when it's sitting on the desk. Then the uh, the sound does seem to transmit. So I personally uh, want that one off. I also find that uh, you know. I guess the reason for having it is to give you that haptic feedback that you are actually pressing a touch screen button. Um, but I'm going to actually see if I've pressed something and something's happened, I will actually see it happening. So I, I've just personally decided that I want that off. So if you do also uh, want that off, then uh, this is where you'll do it in, as I say, the uh, settings and then the device configuration. Scroll down to the bottom. So this has got a little scroll at the side uh, and then just turn off this vibration waveform. That is where to turn that off. There's another option that is switched on by default, which is that whenever you trigger an action, it has a little pop-up on the screen that actually tells you what it's just done. And that is another thing that I don't particularly find uh, useful myself. I don't want something popping up on the screen to tell me that it's done what I've asked it to do <laughs> uh, at the, a precise time that I've asked it, asked it to do it. So um, that can be turned off though, and that is not necessarily obvious where that would be. Uh, it is in these global settings here uh, you've got this thing that says overlay and it doesn't really give you much information about what that is but that is what that is <laughs> the overlay is the uh, overlay enabled uh, so if that was toggled on basically as i say every time you press a button it would just have a little pop-up on your screen that tells you the action that it's just triggered so uh, if that is something you want to turn off uh, that is where you'll find it in overlay and i say i just mentioned this because it isn't immediately obvious where that would be um, the account section in here, by the way, in the global settings, uh, this is for you to link it to. Uh, there's a few different services that you can actually link it with. So link it with your Spotify account, Twitch or Philips Hue to allow you to control those services and devices from the loop deck. So if you did want to go in and add those in, that is where you would do it. The analytics is just basically to decide whether you want to share your usage data with loop deck. Uh, for feedback and obviously improvement process, uh, so their improvement process. So that's something that I've uh, I've done there. So that is an overview of the settings. And so uh, we've also looked at here just very briefly. Uh, I'll just go through this uh, this sort of uh, area here just very quickly as well. Uh, so the plugins are basically different groupings of actions. So this is where we can flick through. And you'll notice that as I flick through these, it changes what is being shown down here. So this is where we're going to choose our different sort of groupings of actions that we want to do, that we want to pick from to use in here. And then down in this area, you can see that they are basically then uh, subdivided then into folders of different actions. Uh, there are a couple of different kinds of actions in here. So if I come down here, for example, you can see that we've got some of them where they have got this little symbol here, which looks like, or is supposed to look like a finger <laughs> pushing a button. So those are actions that we can assign to any of the buttons on the screen or these buttons down here. And then we've also got some here that are sort of rotating. And those are for anything that we can assign to these rotating buttons here. I'll dig into this in a little bit more detail a little bit later. Um, but before we start throwing buttons all over the place and uh, assigning actions, uh, what we need to do is we need to decide how we're going to start to organize this uh, because as you can see there is a huge potential for lots of things that you can do with it and you do need to make sure that uh, you are actually organized with it and so the way that we're going to organize this or the way that you need to think about organizing this is through the use of uh, profiles and profile profiles are a way to basically think about these as different use cases that you may have uh, and different sort of groupings of all of the actions now I'm going to be talking about profiles in the video that's coming right up now uh, and so this is where we're going to start to actually build out our loop deck.